So when the Dragon spacecraft is ready for uh, crewed flights, are you going to be responsible for uh, gathering the first pool of uh, SpaceX astronauts? Um, maybe. I, I, we're not sure. But right now, we're, we're um, in, in my department, we're forming up a small group that will be advocates for future astronauts. And that group could grow into a, 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 an office where the astronauts um, are, are managed inside of SpaceX. But it's, you know, it's just, that's where the group is starting. It, it would probably move out of the safety and mission assurance department and somewhere else inside the company later. But at SpaceX, we all, because it's a small company, we all wear a lot of hats. So, um, you know, it's not unusual for a business development person to be helping in a de uh, technical department somewhere, something like that. And um, so we'll, we'll start off with the overlap and my guess is eventually we'll have our own flight crew office now, is there any possibilities for uh, yourself and uh, uh, Garrett Reisman to possibly fly on the Dragon spacecraft? Oh, it's possible, but we haven't picked who's going to fly the, the first vehicles yet. That, that'll be the head of the company's call, al along with the, our customers. They'll probably have a say in who gets to fly on the early missions, too. And it depends on when, when it happens. The, there are a lot of things that have to go just right before I would get a chance. What I'm more interested in is making sure that we have the capability for people from the United States to fly from a vehicle that launches from the United States into low Earth orbit as soon as we can get it. That's, that's what I want to see. And I'm not as worried about flying in it myself as I am making sure we have that capability. Um, How did you first hear about SpaceX? Um, from the news and the web and watching what they did with COTS and CRS, but, but my first uh, acquaintance was when um, Alan Lennon Moyer, the, the current manager of the Commercial Orbital Transportation uh, System uh, contract, the Space Act agreements, uh, went around to all the management at the Johnson Space Center and briefed them on what they were trying to do with that program. So he came in and uh, told us all about it, and, and I remember looking at it and going, this is what we need. This is exactly what we need. We, we need to make sure this succeeds. That's what the country has to have. And he kind of smiled. I, I don't know if I was the only guy who was supportive, or, <laughs> but I really thought it was important. So, so shortly after I left NASA, I tried to uh, join one of the companies that was working um, on the Commercial Orbital Transportation System project. Um, and uh, to do that, I, I wanted to just look around and see which company had the best approach. And uh, based on what I saw, I thought SpaceX's approach was the best. So, so I sent my resume to them first. Um, and I got to go out and talk to the guys. And, and, and uh, Elon Musk then said, hey, man, it's way too early for a guy like you. We don't, we don't need a crew guy yet. You're just going to distract everybody. <laughs> He says, maybe in a couple of years we'll be ready, but right now we, we just don't need your services. So I went, okay. And so I looked around at other people and, and, and considered working uh, for other companies. The, uh, I, there are other companies that have really good uh, approaches too. I, I like SpaceX's best, but you, know, you can get into arguments about who's really best. I mean, uh, but you know, I work at SpaceX now, so obviously ours has to be the best. Um, but I mean, there's a lot that could be successful. Um, but. Uh, for two years, I worked as a consultant, got to uh, sit on review boards for some of the NASA programs, learned a lot doing that, uh, and got to watch some really good people working in those programs. Uh, but it, you know, you, after a while, you get kind of antsy, and you, you don't want to watch people work. You want to get in the middle of it. And so I thought, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take another stab at, at looking for work out in private industry. About that time, uh, a friend of mine was visiting SpaceX, a guy named Scott Horowitz. And um, he was speaking with them, and they said, hey, we need to hire this guy to do mission assurance. You know anybody who, who might be interested? And uh, they, they said, uh, well, you know, uh, Ken Bowersox is really interested in working for you guys. You might call him again. And they had completely forgotten about me. It was really funny. <laughs> they didn't even remember I'd been out two years prior. And they called me up. We talked, went through the interview process, and I ended up getting hired and, and joining the company. Wow, that's great. So how long have you been with them now? So I've been with the company two years and four months, but I left NASA back in 2006, so roughly just, a, just under five years ago. Um, but I mean, the reason I like to tell that story, number one, is it shows that just because you don't get hired the first time doesn't mean you won't get hired again. So if you've got something you're interested in, you should keep trying. Um, the second is, in the aerospace industry, um, the, the community is small. And you never know who is going to be the person that 
provides the information to someone who provides it to somebody else that gets you a position that, that you might want or gets you into a team that you might want to work on. And so it's important to you know, get to know people, um, let them know you, um, and, and, and we kind of self-distribute uh, uh, amongst the companies that way. The, the network is small, and if you look, people, people move from company to company in the industry, um, and it's a good thing. There's a lot of healthy cross-pollination that happens from that. Um, and, and so you know, it, it, events like the one we're at today, the ISPCS, are great opportunities to build that network um, that, that, that support structure for the whole industry. And, and, and it's really important for the survival and health of the industry. Absolutely. Now, um, Not just for getting you a job. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what was I just going to say? Um, by the time that you started with SpaceX, did they already have the ideas of doing secondary payloads uh, with the, the Falcon 9 rocket? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's just something that's logical. If you have excess lift capability, you know, you want to you use up every bit of it to, and get as much as you can into orbit. Um, the, the, the SpaceX guys have, have some really great ideas, um, and, and they had all those ideas before I ever joined the company. There's very little new that's happened since I joined. <laughs> How do you feel about uh, uh, the Russians' hesitation uh, due to the Orbcom satellites that are going to be on uh, this next flight? Um, um, my guess is they'll ask for information, we'll provide the information. Once they see that, that the risk is acceptable, they'll prove it. They're very logical about things like that. Um, and if they don't, well, we, we don't have to fly those satellites, but it just makes sense uh, for us. We've got extra lift capability. Let's put something useful uh, on the on the vehicle.